we do. As we dive into your word, Lord God, I pray that you give us revelation, Lord. I pray that you would help us, Lord God, to hide it in our hearts that we should not sin against you, Lord God, but rather glorify you, Lord. We seek to give you the glory, give you the honor, and give you the praise. In Jesus' name, somebody said amen. 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 Praise God. All right. We are in the book of Joshua, chapter number 8. And uh, we're getting right along here in the Old Testament. I'm excited about it, the progress that we're making. Uh, But just to recap uh, from Joshua on forward, Moses has passed off the scene. Joshua is now the leader and commander um, of the nation of Israel. Joshua is also the one that has been given uh, the authority that Moses was given. And God said in the same way that he would be with, that he was with Moses, and that he will be with Joshua as well. And so Joshua is the one that's going to take them into the promised land. And he does that by crossing what river? Jordan. Good. The Jordan River. You guys good? Okay. <laughs> crossing the Jordan River. And uh, they did so how? They went on dry land. Good. They walked. Yeah. They walked, they walked on water. <laughs> they walked on the, yes. <laughs> uh, but they know the Lord parted the water and dried up the grounds in the same manner that he did for the Red Sea, showing them that the way that they would came, come out of Egypt would be the same way that they would be brought into the promised land. The way that God brought them out was by power and by demonstration. And the way that God would bring them in is also going to be by power and by demonstration of the Holy Ghost. What a marvelous principle to understand that all of this is really the Lord's doing, okay? And so when they get on the other side, uh, they set stones as a memorial there, 12 stones for each tribe, and each one of them sits sits a stone there uh, to remind themselves of what God had did for them. That when their children and generations would ask, what meaneth these stones, they would tell the testimony of what God did in their lives. Amen. Um, And as we go forward, they observed a Passover And after they observed the Passover, they were faced with their first battle, which was what? Say it louder. Jericho. Y'all alive today? We here today? Praise God. All right. Jericho was their first battle. And their first battle wasn't a conventional warfare. It was one of spiritual warfare in which God commanded the priests to take the Ark of the Covenant and to march around the walls how many times a day at first? One time for how many days? Six days technically. But the seventh day, they marched around it how many times? Seven times. Good. And then the last time they would come around it, the last time they would compass it around about, the Bible says the priest took the horns. What type of horns was it? Ram's horn. Worship horn. There you go. Ram's horns. And they blew the ram's horn. And the commandment was when they blow the horns, everybody do what? Shout. Shout. Yeah, you can't really say that silently. You got to kind of yell it. Shout. And when they shouted, the walls would come down. And that uh, Joshua did that. He commanded them to be silent until the time that they were to shout. They did that. The walls came down, and they killed everybody and everything in the city, save Rahab, whose house was where? On the wall. So her family was saved. They went and brought all of them out. God destroyed the whole, the whole wall system. But the Israelites went up and destroyed the people that were inside the city. There was one commandment, though, that God told them to do, and that was what? Don't take any accursed thing. Kind of sounds like don't eat from this tree, right? And, of course, somebody got to mess it up. And that somebody's name was who? We talked about this last time. Achim. Good. And so, after their glorious defeat at Jericho, you know, anytime you get a big victory like that, you're excited. You got plenty of momentum. And you're ready to go on to the next one. Yeah, let's, let's keep this victory going. So they look at Ai, and Ai is just a small city compared to Jericho. It's not, it's not very, very large at all. And so Joshua says, well, just send a few thousand men up there. We don't need all the whole army. Just a few thousand men, send them up there. And he's thinking that everything is going to be well. They're going to be able to take Ai with the same, with, with, with the same amount of victory. And they get up there, and those 3,000 men flee before Ai. And 36 of them die And Joshua hears the news and falls on his face and cries before the Lord. And the Lord essentially tells him, get up, get off your face, stop crying. Israel has sinned. They have taken of the accursed thing and hid it amongst their stuff. 
And God's plan was to bring everybody up before Joshua. And Joshua, would, God would let Joshua know, kind of narrow it down as to who took the accursed thing. And so they brought Judah up, and then they searched through the tribes, uh, excuse me, through the clans of Judah, and then through the families, and then down to the grandfather, and then finally it was down to Achan. And Joshua said to Achan, give God the glory and tell me what you did. And Achan said, I have touched this. I took a Babylonian garment. I took some gold, and I took some silver, and I hid it under my tent. I have sinned against the Lord. And he said, essentially, why have you sinned and brought this great evil upon us? They took Achan and his family into a valley and did what with them? Stoned them and burned all their stuff. And so the sin has been eradicated. And that's what God said. He said, I will not be with you until you eradicate this sin. And that's a template for us. We cannot expect God to be on our side if we have hidden sin in our lives. I'll say that again. We cannot expect God to be on our side if we have hidden unrepented sin in our lives. People say, well, well, we're all sinners and everybody falls short of the glory of God. And if you say you have no sin, you're a liar. And all of that is true. The difference is the hiding. Well, that's true. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to sin sometimes. You don't even realize that you sin. Sometimes you, most of the time, you're probably going to realize that you sin. Um, <clears throat> but what we really need to do is repent from our sin and eradicate the sin. Nobody believes me in that one. We have to repent from our sin. We have to eradicate the sin, whether it be sin of the flesh, the outwardly stuff that gets preached about all the time, or sins of the heart, the inwardly stuff that it's easy to hide, being church people. <laughs> whether you sin in the flesh such as fornication, which is sex outside of marriage, or you sin in your heart, which is unforgiveness towards your brother or sister in Christ. Amen. Whether you sin in the flesh, such as some sort of addiction to alcohol or whatever, or you sin in your mouth with gossip and lies. Hello. All of that is sin, and to pretend like it's not there, to kind of hide it, is, it will, 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 um, will put you in a very bad place with the Lord, because what this shows us is that we don't have power over our enemies by ourselves. We have power over all the enemy as long as we remain in right relationship with the Lord. That's what people have to understand. We can't just keep quoting the scripture, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. No weapon, come on, formed against me. The hope ha, shall ha, prosper. Ha. And all the hoop in the world is not going to overhoop your hidden sin. James also said, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee. You have to submit to God first. Praise God. Praise God. All right, all right. I know it's a little light in attendance in here, so y'all going to have to help us here tonight. And so they got rid of the sin. However, they still got to go defeat AI, okay? And they need a plan to do that. And that's where our Bible study is going to pick up on today. So let's turn in your Bibles to Joshua chapter number 8, and we're going to see how, how they actually end up defeating AI and getting the victory over them. It's very creative what the Lord tells them to do. All right, so Joshua chapter number 8, we'll start in verse 1. Go ahead, Brother Elliot. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee, and arise and go up to Ai. See, I have given unto thy hand the king of Ai, and his people, and his city, and his land. And thou shalt do to Ai and her king, as thou did unto Jericho, her king. Only the spoil thereof, and the cattle thereof, thou shalt take who I pray unto yourselves. Lay thee in ambush for the city behind it. So Joshua arose and all the people of war to go up against Ai. And Joshua chose out 30,000 mighty men of valor and sent them away by night. And he commanded them, saying, Behold, ye shall lie and wait against the city, even behind the city. Go not very far from the city, but ye are ready. And I and all the people that are with, with me will approach unto the city, and it shall come to pass when they come out against us as at the first, they, that we will flee before them. Uh. For they will come out after us till we have drawn them from the city. For they will say, they flee before us as at, at the first, 
Therefore we will flee before them. Then ye shall rise up from the ambush and seize upon the city. Yeah. For the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. And it shall be when ye have taken the city that ye shall set the city on fire according to the commandment of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Shall ye do. See, I have commanded you. All right, pause right there. So they still have to defeat uh, Ai. And God has a different idea for what to do with this than, um, than Joshua did at the first place. Remember, Joshua just sent a few people. But God tells him, I want you to send everybody. And then the reason for that. Not to say that they couldn't have defeated Ai with just a few people. But they have already fought Ai once. And so what God is doing is he essentially has them to ambush Ai. That's what he's saying. He said, I want you to take everybody, but split them up. And a portion of y'all go right up next to their place, to the west, and, 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 and present yourself in battle. And said, what happens is they're going to come out against you because they're cocky because they think they already got you beat. So your enemy already thinks he has you beat. And so when they come out against you, then you have another ambush waiting to the north. And when they come out, they'll be ambushed and the other people will be able to go in. It's brilliant. Because this only works because they were already beaten once. I'll say it again. This strategy only works because they already were defeated once before. What means is that God took their defeat and turned it into a victory. Because your enemy got a little cocky. And why Micah said, rejoice not against me, O oh, my enemy. For when I fall, I shall arise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light unto me. And so he says, here's what I want you to do. Don't take just a few. Take all of them. Everybody up to war with you. Have one camp sit over here and have another camp sit out there and kind of hide away. And wait till they come out against you and then you'll ambush them. Ooh, the Lord is so smart. See, if we would talk to the Lord, we'd get some great battle strategies that we ourselves wouldn't have come up with. Hello, somebody. Because the Lord knows you, and he knows your enemy. And your enemy thinks he knows you, but your enemy don't know that God's behind you. Hallelujah. And so they have this strategy. So now let's see how God, uh, how Joshua executes it. Verse number 9. Joshua therefore sent them forth, and they went to lie in ambush, and abode between Bethel and Ai, on the west side of Ai. But Joshua lodged that night among the people. And Joshua rose up early in the morning and numbered the people and went up, and he and the elders of Israel before the people to Ai, and all the people, even the people of war that were, that were with him, went up, drew nigh, and came before the city, and pitched on the north side of Ai. Mm -hmm. Now there was a valley between them and Ai, and he took about 5,000 men and set them to lie in ambush between Bethel and Ai on the west side of the city. And when they had set the people... Even all the hosts that was on the north of the city, their liars, and wait on the west of the city, Joshua went that night into the midst of the valley, and it came to pass, when the king, when the king of Ai saw it, that they hasted and rose up early. And the men of the city went out against Israel to battle. And he and all his people, at a time appointed before the plain, but he wist not there were liars in ambush against him behind the city. And Joshua and all, of Israel, and all Israel made as if they were beaten before them and fled behind the way of the wilderness. Yeah. And all the people that were in Ai were called together to pursue after them. And they pursued after Joshua and were drawn away from the city. And there was not a man left in Ai or Bethel that went not out after Israel. Mm -hmm. and, they left, and they left the city open and pursued after Israel. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Joshua, stretch out the spear. That is in thy hand toward Ai, uh -huh. for I will give it unto thine hand. Yes. And Joshua stretched out the spear, and he had it in his hand toward the city. And the ambush arose quickly out of their place, and they ran out as soon as he had stretched out his hand. And they entered, and they entered the city and took it, and hasted and set the city on fire. On. And when the men of Ai looked behind it, they saw, behold, the smoke of the city ascended up to heaven, and they had no power to flee this way or that way. And the people that fled to the wilderness yeah. turned back upon the pursuers. <clears throat> and when Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush 
had taken the city and that the smoke of the city ascended. Then they turned again and slew the men of Ai and the other issued out of the city against them. So they were in the midst of Israel, some on this side, some on that side, and they smoked them. So they let none of them remain or escape. Uh -huh. And the king of Ai, they took alive and brought him to Joshua. And it came to pass when Israel made, had made an end of slaying all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness wherein they chased them, and when they all fallen out of the edge of the sword until they were consumed, then that all the Israelites would turn into Ai and smote it with the edge of the sword. And so it was that all that fell that way, both men and women, were 12,000, yeah. even, even if all the men of Ai. But Joshua drew not his hand back wherewith he stretched out the spear until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. Yeah. Only the cattle and the spoil of the city of Israel took for a prey unto themselves according unto the word of the Lord, which he had commanded Joshua. All right, pause right there. So here is how this has worked. They went up, acted like they were going to go to battle. And the king of Ai got cocky and said, oh, look, here come them pesky Israelites again. Come on, everybody. We get ready to whoop them again. They came back for more. And so once they came up, they hastened and ran after them. And Israel did a fake retreat. They did a fake retreat like, ah, oh, let's run. Let's just pretend. Run, 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 until all the men are out of the city. And once Joshua saw that all the men of Ai came out of the city, he lifted up his spear. And then the men that are sitting in the north that he had sent for an ambush, they ran in the city. <laughs> oh, man, it's like some cartoon Scooby-Doo-like stuff. You ever seen them episodes of Scooby-Doo where their monsters chasing them? They always have a chase montage where they're running around. <laughs> a little chase montage. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's a very e well. It, it, it's e it's different. You know, it's a little easier, but it's definitely easier for them to fight. Why? Because they don't even have to really fight. They left the city. They drove everybody out of the city, and then the five thousand men went into the city and set the whole city up on fire. So that's what God is calling us to do, to drive out the inhabitants of the city and set that thing on fire, fire from the Holy Ghost. Make sure we we'll, make sure we talk about fire from the Holy Ghost. I don't want y'all say, Pastor said we're gonna burn some stuff down. I'm not telling you you're going to burn them down. I'm telling you we need to drive out every devil, every demon, every warlock, every witch, every spirit that is not like God, and then come and bring the fire of the Holy Ghost to our cities and set the whole thing on fire. And then when the devil try to come back in there, we just give him the what, rock him, sock him, one, two punch, and then he's out of here. Praise God. So that's what happened. And when the, when the city was set on fire, the men that were out fighting them turned back and saw the city on fire, and their hearts began to melt. And then at that time, Joshua stopped the fake retreat. <laughs> he, he turned around, and they killed everybody that was out to battle. And then they slew everything inside the city as well. And it said in verse 24, and it came to pass when Israel had made an end of slaying all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness where they chased them, and when they were fallen on the edge of the sword until they were consumed, all the is that all the Israelites returned unto Ai and smote it with the edge of the sword. Verse 25, and so it was that after, that all that fell that day, both men and women, were 12,000. 12,000 died dead. Ai is empty. Praise God. For Joshua, verse 26, drew not his hand back, wherewith he stretched out the spear, until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. This might be unpopular, but I think Israel needs to go, needs to go ahead and do that right now. Let's go ahead and look. It's been, it's been long enough. <laughs> utterly destroy anybody that comes against you. Look at this. Verse 27, this is what I want to focus on. Only the cattle and the spoil of that city Israel took they for prey unto themselves. So this is not like the first battle. They were allowed to take spoils from this war. Which means this. If Achan had just waited, he, right, he could have got all the riches. If he would have just waited, waited until the next battle, he could have had it. But, but oh, help us, Holy Ghost. Jesus, Jesus. Look at your neighbor tell him, just wait. 
Don't go outside the will of God trying to obtain something. Don't go outside the timing of the Lord to try to obtain something. There's a story in 2 Kings about a man called Naaman. Anybody remember that guy? He had leprosy. He was a Syrian. And one of his Israelite slaves told him there is a prophet in Israel. He can heal you if you'll get to him. So Naaman comes down to Elisha, and Elisha tells him through his servant, go dip in the Jordan. He's mad that Elisha didn't come out and greet him. And his servants had to kind of check him like, yo, if he told you to do something great, you'd have done it. Just go and dip in the water, dummy. I doubt they called him a dummy. That's my, my the B. Crow version. And so he finally humbles himself, goes down to Jordan and dips in it and comes out clean. Where after he comes out, you know, it's customary for them time to bring a gift to the prophet. So he's got all kinds of riches for, for Elisha. And he offers it to Elisha, but Elisha doesn't accept it. But, but his servant, Gehazi, is looking at those riches like, what you doing? What you doing? We got a building program coming. What you doing? So, you know, after Naaman leaves, Gehazi, Elisha's servant, goes out and runs after Naaman and pretends like Elisha changed his mind. So he gets all, the, he gets all of those riches, comes back, meets Elisha. Elisha's like, where you been? <laughs> and he, and he checks him. And then and before he could almost answer, he said, went not my heart with thee when you went to go meet Naaman and his chariots, by the way? And this is what he said. Is it a time to receive money and to have oliveyards and vineyards and all of this? Essentially, it wasn't time for a monetary blessing. We got to understand the time we're living in. Because one of the things you're going to fight and struggle with the most is to leave the word and will of God in order to obtain worldly blessing. And it's not that God doesn't want to give us worldly blessing. He just wants to give it to us in the right season at the right time. And we can get ourselves into a lots of spiritual trouble if we go pursuing after worldly things at the wrong time. Especially as the days are closing. As this world is, is about to dry all the way up, as the curtains are about to close and that horn is going to blow, it's going to be a very sad story when somebody goes to try to receive, leaves the church of the living God, leaves the will of God, leaves the word of God to go chase after worldly riches and blessings. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. A blessing out of its timing is not a blessing at all. A blessing at the wrong time is not a blessing at all. So beware of the danger from receiving your or going outside of the word of God to go try to attain something out of the season. If Naaman, excuse me, if Achan had have just waited, he could have been alive at this battle and he would have been allowed to take the spoils of this war, all the cattle and everything in the city. The only stuff that they killed were the inhabitants of the city. Everything else they could take. Let that be a lesson. Praise God. Get it in great. Amen. Patience. Jesus even reiterated this after the young rich ruler left because Jesus said, well, it's easier for a rich man to go through the eye of a needle than it is, excuse me, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter heaven. And Peter's like, well, who can be saved? And he's like, well, to whom it is given. And then Peter says again, well, Lord, we've left all. What are we going to get? And then the Lord said, any man that's left lands or houses or wives or cattle or all of this, he said, I'll give you 100 fold now in this time with persecutions and everlasting life in the life to come. So it's not like God doesn't want to bless us. It's not like God does not have a reward for you. It just might not come in this current season right now. And so it would be an error to leave the word of God chasing after what Jesus called the deceitfulness of riches. Ooh, help us, Holy Ghost the deceitfulness of riches, and violate and, and ended up losing out because it's, it's not really going to profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul. And as we trickle more towards these last days, people are, I, I, are, I can already sense and feel it, people are going to start leaving the church chasing after riches, backing off of their consecration chasing after riches, backing off of their commitment and prayer meetings and service times chasing after riches trying to make a buck, when eventually that horn's going to blow and them riches ain't going to be Nathan. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Amen. Somebody said, just wait on the Lord. <laughs> Amen. All right. Let's pick up in verse uh, 28, Brother Elliot. And Joshua burnt Ai and made an heap forever and even a desolation unto this day. And the king of Ai, he hanged on a tree until eventide. And as soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that they should take his carcass down from the tree and cast it at the entering of the gate of the city and raised thereon a great heap of stones that remained unto this day. Then Joshua built an altar unto the Lord of God, Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal. And as, the, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones over which no man had lifted up any iron, and they offered, and they offered thereon burnt offerings unto the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. And he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel and all Israel and the elders and officers and their judges stood on the side, the ark, and on the side before the priests, the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, as well the stranger, as he that was born among them, half of them over against Mount um, Gerizim, and half of them over against Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded before, that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward, he read all the words of the law, and the blessings and cursings according to all that is written in the book of the law. And there was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read, not before all the congregation of Israel, mm -hmm. with the woman and the little ones and the stranger that were converse, conversing, conversing among, them. among them. Okay, so this is unique because this place that they had this battle between Bethel and Ai is also the place where Abraham built an altar. And it's the first place where Abraham called upon the name of the Lord. This is a special place. This is also where Jacob laid his head and saw the, the vision of the angels and the ladder descending up and down on that. And God gave him a promise and then bring him back. So it's no coincidence that God brought them right back to this place to win this battle. That he rebuilt another altar. But this time they're not strangers in a foreign land. This time they are possessing it. And he reads the covenant. Well, so what he does, he takes all the 613 positive and negative commandments and writes them, copies them down, and reads them from before all the people right here at this place. It's not the last time you'll see this happen. They'll do this again when they come back into the land uh, in the book of Ezra. The same thing happens. They all stand up and they hear the word of the Lord. That's why, by the way, we stand when we read the word of the Lord before we preach. Because it's customary that everybody stand and do that. We can see that in the word of God. And it's going to happen again. When Jesus comes back, he's going to teach. We're all going to have to stand. He's going to read commandments. Not just before us, but before every inhabitant of the earth. It's going to happen in Jerusalem. So this is a very customary. And, it, and it's basically a declaration that we will keep the law that God has spoken. Why is that important? Because if they don't keep the law, they can't stay in the land. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's why you need to teach. Well, it's, it's, I, I connected multiple portions of Scripture. Cause, so, <clears throat> because I've, I've read, of course, Genesis, what Abraham did, and then what Jacob did, and then now where Joshua is, and then the same thing happens again in Ezra. I put, I connected. No, 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 no. I, 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 that, that's what I like to do with the Old Testament. I draw out the relevance for us in other portions of Scripture. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I, I could make. Yeah. Well, he built an altar, sacrificed, copied the commandments, and then read it before everybody. Yeah. Because very shortly he's about to, and we're, we're going to read this here in a second, he's going to begin to divide the land. Yeah. All right. My bad on that one. This good question. Lots of people probably get lost and so don't say nothing. <laughs> we don't know what Pastor said, but we're kind of tired, so let's let him keep talking. 
<laughs> go, go ahead, Brother John. Oh, yeah. Copied it. Yeah. Yeah, what it's yes. So it's, 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 it's a lot of writing. And there's really some more lying up under the surface there. Uh, I won't go into it today because we got to move on. But if you look at the fact that AI, the king, he hung on a tree until evening and then took him down before the next day. Who's that sound like? Uh, no, not Judas. Jesus. He was hung on a tree. Then they took him down before eventide. And then next thing you know, there's an altar built and the law was given. So the principle is once the sacrifice is made, the law will come or the Holy Ghost is going to come. Yeah, it's a pattern. It's a pattern. But I think it's a pattern pointing to Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Let's hop over to. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They have to be proactive because the principle is this. God gave them a promised land, but it's full of people that are pagan. <clears throat> it belongs to them, correct. And so what they have to do is fight to possess what belongs to them. Correct. Because the power, the power to win these battles doesn't belong to you. It belongs with God. And so what Joshua is in the Old Testament is natural. What we're doing in the New Testament is spiritual. The same thing's happening. The souls of this world belong to Jesus. But there are demons that have possessed them in the territories. And so the church's responsibility is to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Right? Right? What we're doing at the same time, we're fighting spiritual powers and we're dispossessing them off of their territory. Correct. Proactive. And my bishop said we need 99 churches. Yeah. Correct. Because we can't do it based on our own power, our own plans. Go ahead, Bryce. Bryce. Make it quick, son. We got to move on. Oh, they were killed by Joshua and his army that was outside the city. Oh, yeah, they were, they were, they're dead. Toast. <laughs> Toast. Burnt to a crisp. My boy right there. Hallelujah. So, so y'all better get right. Y'all going to be toast. No butter either. Toast. No jelly. No cinnamon. Toast. Amen. All right. Let's hop over to Joshua. No, Joshua 14. Yeah, this is the last scripture we'll cover in Joshua because it pretty much sums up the rest of what's getting ready to happen. Joshua chapter number 14. In the West, there are the countries which the children of Israel inherited in the land of Canaan, which um, Eliezer, the priest, and, and Joshua, the son of Nun, and the heads of the father, of the tribes of the children of Israel distributed for the inheritance to them. By the lot was their inheritance, as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses, for the nine tribes and for the half tribe, for Moses had given the inheritance of two tribes and a half tribe on the other side, Jordan. But unto the Levites he gave none inheritance among them. For the children of Joseph were two tribes, Man, man, uh, Manasseh, Manasseh and Ephraim, mm -hmm. therefore they gave no part unto the Levites in the land, save cities to dwell in with their suburbs for their cattle and for their substance. As the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. All right, so you see what's going on here. Joshua is taking this land, and he's about to divide it up. I would love for this day to come. Can you imagine if South Tampa was just all these houses and mansions was just empty? And, uh, and the South Tampa Saints come in here, he's like, all right. You McGurks were giving you 
Sun Bay South. It's yours. That's South of Gandy is what I just gave you. Oh, you see, look, she's bad. I'm bad. My bad. I'm gonna go over here and talk to somebody else. They, they're, they're gentrifying all of South Tampa, so all of it's good. Prime real estate. And <laughs> look, look. And then, 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 then Winnie, we're giving you, we give you Beach Park, which is right, right over here, right, right over there. And then, and then Barrios, uh, mm, y'all are already in Beach Park, so I can't. The Swan Estates, you guys get Swan Estates. There you go. Praise God. What Bayshore? You don't get Bayshore. Look at, look at, look. All right. Antasia, giving you, I'm giving you Port Tampa. Boom. See, all your faces, all your faces is turned up because y'all ain't driven and walked through these neighborhoods. Your faces is turned up. I live in Port Tampa. They 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 built two three hundred houses in Port Tampa. Each one of them houses is five hundred grand or up. That's where that's where who's that professional wrestler that lives down there with his gated gated. Batista lives in lives in Port Tampa. He right in my neighborhood. He got a big old fence around his property. Port Tampa, you know. Waddles will give you guys South Bay Shore. The Bay Shore is south of Gandy, right down there where the golf club is and where, like, the little horses are. All of them give, yeah. Ballast Point. Yeah, there you go. Ballast, Ballast Point. You know? And this is, this, is, this is what God has given them. Now, mind you, when you get there, you might have to knock somebody on top of their head and tell them to get out of your house. She silly said, gladly. <laughs> <laughs> or, or they could stay, but you have to worship their gods. We're not doing that? You sure? Well, but, you know, their gods are not as strict. And, and, and they're... The way they worship, you know, is pleasing to your flesh. And, and you don't have to fight. And, and they got a lot of single sisters and a lot of single brothers over there. We'll say, oh, y'all in here, half y'all in here married, so that does, that's not a big, you know. Okay, so now you understand the predicament that Israel is in. They have one of the best pieces of real estate on the earth, hence the war we're in now. Okay. Um, but there are people that are there, and God wants them to drive out all the inhabitants of the land that they're going into because he knows if they don't drive them out, they will start compromising, and compromise they did. And so um, can you imagine, talk about wealth, when God wanted to make his people wealthy, he did not give them jobs. He gave them land. That's a, that's a very good financial principle to, to grab a hold of, which means more of us need to be business or landowners instead of regular employees. Because I believe there's going to come a time and before the Lord comes that we won't, they're not going to tolerate your Jesus name self up in corporate America they're not going to tolerate your Jesus name self in the hospital system or they're not going to tolerate your Jesus name self in the normal secular jobs. So not only are you going to have to provide for yourself, you might have to hire some saints. Amen. You said if they got some. <laughs> Amen. So they got their land. The only, but there were some tribes that had land on the other side, on, on, on the other sides, and you, you can you, re, you can read about those tribes in the beginning of Joshua, and so Joshua begins to divide up the land. Now it was each one of them's responsibility to drive out the inhabitants. The Lord does not want them cohabitating, okay? Which which goes for us. The Lord does not want us having company with evil spirits. You know, drive that out, because if you don't drive it out, it will influence you. You won't influence it. So you must completely eradicate it 
Otherwise, you're going to pay a penalty. And long story short, they end up paying a penalty. They did not do that. And so God left some of them there as a thorn in their flesh. <laughs> Hence the Philistines, or our, we call it Palestine. Praise God. Thorn even to this day. All right. Let's continue on in, in, in uh, chapter 14, verse number 6. Yes. Then the children of Judah came, came unto Joshua and Gilgal, and to Caleb, the son of Je Jephunneh, Jephunneh. Jephunneh, and the Kesanite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when, when the Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to Epsi out the land. A spy. A spy. Oh, a spy out the land. And brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I, but holy to follow the Lord my God, and Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast holy found the Lord my God. And, that, and now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake his word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now to lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. Mm -hmm. As yet I am as strong this day I, as I was in the day that Moses sent me, as my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war, both to go out and to come in. Yes. Now therefore give me this mountain, this mountain, whereof the Lord spake in, the day, in that day, for thou heardest, in that day, now the Ancoms were there. The Anakins. 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 Were that there, that the city were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. Yes. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jennifer, Abram, for inheritance. Abram therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jennifer, the Kesanite. Until this day, mm -hmm. because that he wholly followed the Lord, God of Israel, in the name of Hebron, therefore was Kerjath Arba, which Arba was a great man of the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. All right. This is Caleb. Remember the other spy with Joshua that had a good report and tried to steal the people to say we can go up at once and possess it, but they wanted to stone him and make some new leaders and go back to Egypt? This is that same Caleb. And he said, I've been waiting for 40 years. 45 technically right now because this is five years into it. He said, so this is, uh, I've been waiting for 45 years. And matter of fact, I'm just as strong now as I was then. So, you know, he, he recounts the whole story. You remember, you remember when? And Moses promised me, he said, give me my mouth. That's my testimony. Give me my, give me one. I've been waiting. I've been suffering these knuckle-headed Israelites for 40 years. I want what's coming to me. Praise God. Praise God. And it's a setup for the future. Because the land that he requests is Hebron, which previously is where the giants dwell. And Caleb is from what tribe? Nope. Nope. Judah. There you go. Now, if you look on a map where Hebron and the tribe of and, and Judah is, today it's the West Bank. Huh? Well, I mean, Israel itself kind of surrounded by bodies of water, whether it be rivers or the lake or the sea. So, um, you're right in that, in, in that opinion. But my point is that today, Israel does not have sovereignty over the West Bank, which is Judea and Samaria. Or the land that Caleb is saying, give me my land. They don't have it. That's part of what they call Palestine area. They have a little bit of most of Jerusalem. 
But Israel has sacrificed territory in the name of peace, but it hasn't worked. They're going to have to do what Caleb said. Give me my mountain. I don't care nothing about them giants up there. I'm just as strong today as I was back 40 years ago. I'll kick every one of them out. Which is why I say this is a setup for the future. Because later on, there's going to come a big old giant on the land of Judah called Goliath. And he's going to go down in the valley. And there's going to come a man from the tribe of Judah, a boy rather, called David. And he's going to look at that giant and say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And essentially what he's saying, that guy has no right to this land. You got no right to be standing on my Judean hill that I was granted by my great ancestor, Caleb, who said, give me this mountain in my land. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? God's going to fight this battle. And that giant went down because the Anakims were the giants. Hello, somebody. They don't have that land. I, I think they get ready to. Yeah. Yeah, now this was written about probably about 1,200 years before Jesus. People claim it. I haven't seen any giants. We just call them NBA players. <laughs> I want a baller. He's a giant right there. That guy's not going to live long. They don't. Statistically speaking, the, the dudes over 6'6", six, 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 they, don't, they, don't, they don't live that long. So got Shaq. He's not that old. He's in his 50s. She, he, ain't, he ain't that old. Shaq ain't that old. Yeah, but essentially, they don't have that land. But what I'm saying is that it belongs to them. And this is, we're talking about 3,000 years ago from today. And so people don't know their Bible. They don't know their history. So they call Israel colonizers. Israel's not colonizing nothing. This has belonged to them since this time. Go ahead. Oh. Well, it's still got nothing to do with religion. It's history. They had that land. No, 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 no. Oh, no. It's not history. <laughs> Fake news. Yeah. 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 And, and on a more, and also, well, not more important, but equally important is that before Israel came in, this land was divided. It's not like the Hittites got along with the Jebusites. And the Jebusites was cool with the Perizzites, and they were cool with the Canaanites and the Amorites. They were, they were separate peoples dwelling in their own segmented parts. It was, the, it was Israel that came in and united the whole region for, to be one nation. And it has been that way for thousands of years. And it's really their own fault why they got kicked out. But, you know, that lack of knowledge of history is exactly why we're seeing what we're seeing today. And which is bringing forth the prophecy that all nations would turn against Israel. And they're doing that right now. But I, I find this interesting that we're at this part of the Bible study with all the current events. And this shows you where God divided up that land and what tribes belong where. And uh, if you look on a map... Right now, that West Bank is actually, there's even, I've even heard some, some religious-based news commentators that don't call it the West Bank. They call it Samaria and Judea. They say, well, the West Bank is not a thing. They only call it the West Bank because it's on the west side of Jordan, on the West Bank of Jordan, <laughs> which is stupid. <laughs> like, no, that's Samaria, and that's, that's Samaria, and that's, uh, that's Judea. You got a map there, yeah. Okay, we're going to wrap it up right there. So um, Caleb got his inheritance that was granted to him in the, in the place that is called Hebron. Um, and for the rest of the book of Joshua, they're going to seek to destroy and remove all the inhabitants. But just a side note, they're going to fail. And so um, the Bible study exploring God's word hops from this point into the book of uh, Judges. And we're not going to cover every judge. There's 12 of them, and then Samuel's the last one. Uh, we'll, probably, we'll probably cover uh, Gideon. Samson, definitely, and maybe Deborah. Probably those, those three are probably the ones, that, the ones that stick out in my head. So, yeah, go ahead. Ooh. 
It's okay, Brother John. You just <laughs> my mind was someplace else, and I, I actually thought you had something serious to say. What, well, Lord? What was I thinking? <laughs> no, not yet. Mm-hmm. How did they? How do we take? Okay, I'm going to answer your question with a question. It's probably going to frustrate you, but I'm going to walk you through it. <laughs> That's true. I can't get mad at that. <laughs> Some people like it, Brother John. Some people are just like, just tell me the answer. My wife is one of those people. She'd be like, why do you do this to me? Just tell me. I'll leave it on a 30-minute conversation to answer a two-minute question. Yeah, so just pray for us. Pray for our wives. <laughs> um. Bryson, sit down and be quiet. Um, in this story, the people of Israel represent who? Who would you think in the New Testament? The Israelites represent the church. Good. Um, Joshua represents who? Jesus. I would say Jesus. Actually, his name actually is just Jehoshua, which is Jesus, the long form of Yeshua, which is Jesus. Or you, you could say a man of God, a pastor, too, because he is the good shepherd. He's the old first shepherd. Okay. And so their enemies represent who in the New Testament? I wouldn't say the sinners. The enemy represents who? I would say demons or devils. And so then the commandment was from God to completely remove and dispossess all of the inhabitants of the land or the devils. And then they would take the spoils to themselves, which the spoils is the land and all of their possessions, which in the New Testament is the souls. Okay, so if they don't dispossess all the demons, they will conform to them. Same thing with us. If we don't dispossess them, they'll start to influence us. And we'll start to conform and we'll lose our ability to fight. So how do we apply this? We have to dispossess every demonic force. Every devil, every demon. And then once we do, that's what Jesus said. The strong man of the house has got to be bound first. Then you can spoil his goods. The goods are the souls. We've done that here before. We've done that here. Yeah. Yeah, this is, you know. Uh, but you're absolutely right. That happened in Belglade. I was there for that. It happened in Haines City. Did we go to the one for Kissimmee? I don't think we did in Kissimmee. But everywhere that Bishop has planted a church, Sister David normally organizes a prayer walk or multiple prayer walks around that. Absolutely. Because you, you just don't walk into a city without dealing with the demon of that city. And it's an ongoing thing because here's what God said. Hold up, Bryson. He said, I'm not going to give you all of it at once because it would be too much for you. So the key to complete dominion is multiplication. Say that again. 99 churches, but not just that, for us to multiply. It makes no sense to have 99 churches with five people per church. Because if you, if you drive out the inhabitants, here's what the Old Testament, the Lord said, the wilderness and the beast will overtake you. Okay. So he gave it to them according to what they could handle. This is, goes all the way back to Adam and Eve when God told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply replenish the earth, and subdue it. You think why what happened? Because a third of these demonic angels fell. And they fell where? In the earth. And so the way that you have dominion is multiplication. That's why the devil fights people getting saved so much. 
Because every person that gets saved, baptized in Jesus, saying full of the Holy Ghost and gets disciples and rooted in the Lord is now a soldier in the army of the Lord. And the more of us we have, the more dominion we can have. Pastor Collins has a book called Dominion. You ought to read it. He expounds upon this concept, the whole thing. So the purpose for us, we have to drive out all the enemies and we have to spoil his goods and multiply and make sure we don't touch the accursed thing ourselves. That's the other part. Yes, Bryson. I wonder if I can hold my hand. How you doing? Right there? That kind of hurt my shoulder blade a little bit. I should have stretched before I did that. Go ahead. Uh huh. Correct. He said, when he says spoil his goods, who is he? He is the devil, and his goods are the sinners of the souls of this world. You got to make it quick. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Who? No. You said yes and no, so I'm leaving it at that. <laughs> Out of the worth of words, did the angels fall and turn into people? I said no, they didn't turn into humans. Could anybody else before we go to the homework question for tonight, or to me for next time? Yeah, I I, uh, I got a mini rule of revelation the other day. I was going on a fast. I went to Barnes and Nobles to get some reading material. And this wasn't like this when I used to go back in the day. They got a whole section dedicated to witchcraft. And it's right out in the open. And a lot of it's children's material. And it's not like, you know, fantasy stories. It's instructional books. Just It was a big section. I'm like, the name? Dad, you know, so I, I don't know, you know, uh, I feel like we need to have an Acts chapter 19 revival where they took their books, witchcraft books, and burnt them, just take them all up, and the price of them was hun of a thousands of dollars worth of, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of today's dollars. They were expensive books. They just burnt them all up, the witchcraft books. We need to have that type of Holy Ghost revival in, in Tampa because, you know, um, absolutely, and, and people are believing more in those dark arts than they, more than they believe in the power of God, which is the foolish part. I'm like, what? Wait a minute, what? I want, let me get let's, go, come get some real power then. Read the real book. Praise God. Amen. All right, homework for next time. Where did that angel find Gideon? Where was Gideon found when an angel came to him? And said, Thou mighty man of valor. No, Brother John. You got to put your hand up like that. Lord. Illy. Past 35, it don't just go like that that easy. It's... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sit down, son. Sit down, son. We're going to pray out. Any last questions before we pray out? No? All right. Homework question, I'll repeat it. Where did the angel find Gideon? Where did he, huh? What? No, where? Where did he find him? Where? Just, just tell me where. If you read it, you'll know what I'm talking about. All right. Where did he find Gideon? All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today, O oh God, for your love and kindness. Your mercy toward us, Lord. I thank you that you've brought us out of darkness into marvelous light, that you've brought us into this kingdom, Lord Jesus, oh God. 
And we pray, oh God, that you would keep us, Lord. Help us to drive out everything that is not like you, Jesus. Help us to dispossess every demonic spirit, Lord God. Help us to wage the weapons of our warfare, which are not carnal but mighty through you. Let it pull down every stronghold, Lord Jesus, O oh God. Give us victory upon every side, Lord Jesus. And keep us, Lord, uh, until we enter into your kingdom, Lord God. Until that horn blows, Lord God. I pray that you keep us, Lord. I pray that your will would be done, Lord. I pray, Father, as we leave this place tonight, that you would give us traveling mercies and graces, O oh God, to come back and to worship again. We'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Somebody said in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Love you. See you on Wednesday night. Huh? Yes, sir.